So Jaffest, that's the biggest show of the year. Not only was it our finale, it was Driftmasters European Championship finale, and it was my finale as an organizer of Irish Drift events. So that's a lot of pressure on one event. And I went to Mandelo Park and I said, look, it's my last event. We haven't had a really good year, but I need one big gamble from you guys. And they were amazing. They said, look, put it to me what you want and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. So I said, I want to go back to the Global Warfare layout, the layout that made Irish Drifting so famous, put us on the map. I want to add in a roundabout, which I thought was awesome from other events we'd done during the year. I needed tarmac laid. I needed hundreds of meters of cables run. I needed two massive grandstands. I needed two screens. Pulling first, second, third gear, straight onto a wall. It's just nothing that I've done before. You'll always hear me talk about how different um, drifting, especially Irish drifting, is, is to every other motorsport. And I think that was really shown in what happened to one of the drivers that we had given a wild card to the event. So Niall Murray, he's won everything when it comes to professional motorsport, you know, single seaters, touring cars, that kind of stuff. And he's from a different world. But the last world he wanted to conquer was drifting. And I think for good or for bad, it wasn't what he expected. The last battle in the first bracket of our top 32, Niall Murray qualifying up the order in fifth position. Doing oh, big contact, contact. Oh, and a big, big impact contact. into the wall. Would you believe it? He was put into the wall hard. It was a very, very, very heavy impact. Like I remember seeing that car go up in the truck and I was like, it's not coming back out. I've seen a lot of cars go into the pits and not come back already that day. And I thought that was another one. Basically, what you want to do is your, uh, your sash is already bent. So instead of fucking trying to knock it in, your steering's going to be off. You're going to use the, the slightly bent voice pad and then track it the way it should try to be. Yeah. And you're already at 10-0 when you're Yeah, track. I know, yeah. Here we are, 24th banner. You have about 3-4 minutes max, lads. When you go back out, man, it'll be not nice to drive. I know, yeah. But literally, stay behind them. It doesn't matter if you make pressure, just go and score a 10-0. Yeah. You're true to the top 15 when it comes back in, align it on traffic stuff. So. Oh, thanks, thanks, William. You may get Wayne to have a quick check in this because there's a few little dodgy things been done here, right? Aye, are you ready? Aye, are you ready to go? Right, he's moving here. Murray's moving there now, he's gone. Well, it looks like he's looking confident, you know. He, again, another driver sitting with points in the bag right now. And Canal Murray get himself in to his first pro event top 16. Here we go as they fire down and grip levels change since the last time. That's oh, that's a big crash into the wall. Both, both guys, cars. both guys wow. into the wall. Just make it official yeah. and all judges in favour of Niall Murray. The fact that the entire drift community, again, even to an outsider, you know, someone that had only just come in, that they would get under his car, fix his car and get him back onto the track when even he'd given up on it. I mean, he was running around the pits <laughs> asking people who to pay, who, who, who did he owe money to? And people were laughing at him saying that's not how it works around here. And that sort of stuff makes me very proud to be a part of the Irish drift community, that they're so selfless to anybody regardless of their background or where they're from. You know, it's insane. And the fact that they don't give up on it, it doesn't, I'm not even sure if it's sane sometimes. There's not even a reason. Sometimes just let it go, but they don't. And that's the amazing thing. That never say die attitude is so unique to Irish drifting. And I hope it's something we never lose. Yeah, it was tough. First first lap in the, in the wet. Um, obviously I crashed the first corner the first, in the first battle. So didn't know what the track was going to be like, uh, but outside of the car just, it just wasn't right. Um, look, thanks a million to everybody that helped. You know, at a race meeting, if you crash, it's nobody's really going to come and help you. They lend you a wishbone or something, that might be the, the, the most of it. But they're certainly not going to be crawling underneath the car and doing everything that the lads were doing here. So the Shanahan's crew came up and gave a big hand. This man here, I'm not sure if his name, he gave me a big hand as well, the welder and everything, and I'm sure we'll get it fixed and get back out. Guys, nice, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure everybody in the tower, me included, said that's the end of that. That car ain't coming back out on track, not a hope. And now we're back onto the track and, you know, it wasn't the easiest weekend for him, but I think he learned a lot about the true spirit of the sport that weekend. <laughs>